Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, we need to take a little bit of a look at one of the most, and I am not exaggerating when I say this, one of the most ridiculous Pokemon TCG cards we've seen, and I say that with nothing but love, because oh my goodness, I want this so badly! And I might actually be able to get it. Although there is going to be a mad dash, we'll talk about that as we go. It is the Sword and Shield Precious Collector Box, and it is coming later this year. And essentially what you get is a binder, a very premium binder, a deck box, a very premium deck box, a frame, a very premium frame, and one of the coolest promos we have seen. And I adore this, ladies and gentlemen. I absolutely adore this. And look, we've seen boxes like this in the past. We've seen these super premium boxes. And they tend to be very expensive. They tend to sell out very quickly. And they tend to not come back and then rise in value on the secondary market. But it does seem like Pokemon are aware of this. And they are doing what they can to try and alleviate the problem which I like very much indeed. Now, in terms of price, we are talking 17,600 yen, which if we put into currencies, the majority of you will be more familiar with, is about $135 or 110 pounds. This is a premium product. It is a binder, long deck box, which is, fits more than one deck, let's be clear, frame and a promo for 110 quid. It's expensive. But it's supposed to be expensive. It is supposed to be a premium product. And it is a very premium product. And to be fair, if you think £110 is expensive and you think $135 is expensive, come back in five years' time. See if you can buy this for $135. I dare you. If I remember, I'll do an update video in 2027. But the chances are, I'm going to be honest with you, I probably won't remember. If anyone wants to set a reminder on their phone and remind me in 2027, cool, we'll get on it. It will be lovely. So, this is kind of awesome, but let's take a look at the promo, because I think the promo here is very telling. Obviously, you've got Pikachu in the middle, that shouldn't surprise anyone. But if you look at the card, it, it's basically the Sword and Shield metagame over the life of Sword and Shield. Like, everything on there other than Pikachu, sorry Pikachu, you've not been shaping the metagame, everything else on there is, is kind of a big deal. So, you know, if we go around, you've got Crobat. Well, for the majority of the Sword and Shield era, we've all been playing Crobat as our draw power. That's what we've had. That's what everybody's been putting into their deck. And now it's featured on here. That makes perfect sense. Zashian, okay, fine. It doesn't see much play at the moment, admittedly. But Zashian has seen a huge amount of play in the earlier days of the TCG. In Sword and Shield, I mean. And it has absolutely ruled the game for entire formats. It's been huge. We've got Shadow Rider Calyrex, who admittedly not quite as impactful as the other ones we've seen, but... Let's be clear. Firstly, great deck, seen a bunch of play and success. Secondly, come on. It, it's one of the ones from the Crown Tundra. It had to be on there. And then by the same token, we've got your single strike Urshifu. Then again, it, it's been good here and there. It's not been quite to the same level. In fact, Rapid Strike Urshifu is one that's really been making hay lately. But we've got the Isle of Armor. And clearly they wanted to get both parts of the DLC represented on this card. You've then got Inteleon. And certainly lately, Inteleon, that whole Inteleon engine, really has been at the centre of, like, all the best decks in the format. So absolutely deserves to be on here. And then you've got Hisui and Zoroark. And I think Hisui and Zoroark is going to be amazing. We don't know. It's not out yet. It looks great. And I think the card designers think it's going to be great. That's why it's featured on here. But again, we've got the Isle of Armor represented. We've got the Crown Tundra represented. It makes sense that we also have Legends Arceus represented on here as well. It's not just that this is a beautiful card, although let's be clear, it is a beautiful card. 
It is a fact that every part of this card shows us what the game has been like over the past couple of years. And I love the attention to detail. And let's be perfectly clear, right? There is absolutely no chance whatsoever that is a coincidence. Because we see this on the other products as well. Like if we have a look at the front of the binder here, what cards can we see? Oh look, it's Marnie. And we all know that Marnie has been one of those supporter cards which has seen the most play since it came out. Marnie has been one of the big ones. Marnie has been huge. Absolutely huge. This is the full art artwork if anyone's interested. Obviously, that's going to be on there. Galarian Moltres, which has been a huge card that's seen a huge amount of play. That's on there, surprisingly enough. Again, we are actually talking about the full art. If we match them up there, this is the full art, not the regular. We've got Mew V Max, which has obviously been a very big card. And then I should mention we've got both Hasui and Samurott and Hasui and Zoroark, that we don't know if they're going to be great, but I think they've got a lot of potential, and clearly the designers of this product think they're going to be great, which is why they're represented on here. Again, and I cannot stress this enough, no part of this is a coincidence. This has obviously been done very deliberately. They are showing us, hey, this is what the game has looked like, and I absolutely adore it. And then, of course, if we go and have a look at the box, you can see cards on there like Zashium. And we can see Luminion on there, who, of course, is the new card that lets you search out your supporter cards when you play it. So clearly, that's one that a lot of people are playing. That's one that deserves to be represented. And this is what I love so much about this product. It's not just that it's really cool, although let's be clear, it is really cool. It's the fact that it's really celebrating the Sword and Shield era of the TCG. This is called the Precious Collector Box, but it really is just a celebration of the Sword and Shield era, and I love it. Couple other things to note, the binder is side-loading. That's a big deal, cards are generally safer in side-loading. Because when they're kind of top-loading, you have to turn your sleeves upside down, or else the top of the pocket and the top of the sleeve dust can get in there. Whereas side-loading tend to be more secure. They don't fall out when you turn the binder upside down. Dust doesn't get in as easily, etc. They're just way better. The better binders tend to be side-loading. Pokemon doesn't tend to do side-loading. This is awesome. The frame, and then I've got to thank the lovely Primal Lugia for pointing this out. The frame is actually a very high quality frame, which generally retails for about 3,500 yen over in Japan. It's made from thick acrylic, and it fits sleeved cards. Now, I've shown you lately a lot of these frames that have been released over in Japan, and they're very cool frames. And I love them, and I've got some of them. But they only fit unsleeved cards, which is a bit of an issue. And they're nowhere near as premium as this frame here. Like I said, everything about this product screams that it is a premium product. And if you don't want to go and spend $135 on a big deck box, a binder, a frame, and a promo card, then I absolutely understand that. That makes perfect sense to me. That's a lot of money. If you are a fan of the Pokemon TCG that wants to celebrate the Sword and Shield era and wants a premium product, this is perfect, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely perfect. I love this. I absolutely love this. This is just phenomenal. Now, generally speaking, this will be the part where we start getting a bit worried. Because this goes up on the website, and it sells out instantly, and then everybody gets a bit sad. What we're told is this. Pre-orders will be accepted at the Pokemon Center online, in Japan, obviously, in May with delivery scheduled for late November or later. Now, in business, we refer to this as lead time, the time between having to make the order and having to deliver the order, how long you've got to do it. And that is a long lead time. That is six months of lead time. So we can read between the lines here and say, they are going to make a lot of these. You do not give yourself six months to produce these. If you're only going to produce a couple of thousand, you can do that a lot quicker. I can't tell you for certain. Again, all I'm doing is using my business knowledge to tell you what is likely the case based on what we know. And that is that they are going to be printing a bunch of these. Now, it does say the orders will stop being accepted when they reach the maximum number. But they also say they may resume at a later date with a new shipping date i.e. 
Even when it's full, they might then have a second wave of pre-orders going up, which sounds kind of awesome. So that's it. That's what we know. This is, it seems to be, the signature product of the Sword and Shield era, by none. This is the product that they're using to celebrate the Sword and Shield era. It's why all of the stuff is very premium and expensive. It's why you've got all of the images of those popular, well-used cards over the stuff. It is why you have that awesome promo. And again, I cannot stress enough, if you look at the promo, if you look at the cards which are represented on the products, there is no coincidence going on here. This is clearly a product which is made to celebrate the Pokemon TCG Sword and Shield era, and I absolutely love it. Oh, I should mention while I'm here, I did translate this card myself because it's very simple. Two lightning, one colorless energy, 90 damage, and you do 30 to yourself. It's not a good card. That's not the point. No one's putting this into a deck. There is also a chance this card never sees an English release. I'm not saying it will. I'm not saying it won't. I am saying there is a chance because sometimes these rarer Japanese cards in these celebration products don't. And this is not a card that needs to be released over here. For now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to know what you think about this. I want to know if you want to be trying to order it. I want to know anything you want to tell me. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.